So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and you probably clicked on this video because you just installed either iOS 15 or iPadOS 15 because it released September 20th to the entire public. And with that came a bunch of new features that are gonna make your experience, your iOS, especially your iPadOS experience, just a little bit better. And the best part about it is that you don't have to pay anything to get it updated. So make sure you have enough space, make sure you have enough storage, you're connected to the Wi-Fi, and get that thing installed over the air. But if you guys do wanna see kind of the main features and the main things that we're gonna see with iPadOS 15, click on the first video in the description down below because that's gonna give you guys the main walkthrough because this video is gonna be talking about some of those features that kind of went overlooked, some of the features that we missed, and again, some other features that are just gonna make your day-to-day -day a little bit more efficient and a little bit better. Because overall, we got those big features like SharePlay, like universal control, you know, thanks to the Notes app and things like that. But I wanted to get a little bit more granular in the settings and then some of those other features that just weren't spoken about. But without further ado, let's get into the video and comment below as the video goes on. Have you guys seen these features? Are these new to you? Always curious to find out, but let's get into it. pull up the iPad screen right here. We're just gonna walk through some of the features that I said before that were overlooked by those main headlining features, like the notes redesign, the Safari redesign. Those are all things that you're gonna be able to find in my last video for iPad OS 15, the complete walkthrough. So these are features that went overlooked, but are, in my opinion, they're still just as important, right? And the first one we're gonna start with is actually FaceTime. So FaceTime got a bunch of new updates on both iPad OS and iOS 15. So if we go into FaceTime, you can see that originally we, we do have center stage. So if you do have one of the new M1 iPad Pros, you'll notice that it just follows kind of my face around everywhere, which to each their own. Some people like it, some people don't. But the main thing that I like about that is that you do get more viewing angles, right? So the ability to have more than one person on a FaceTime or have a big group of people on a FaceTime, that's awesome to see. But the first thing that you actually notice is that there's two new buttons, right? The first one is this create a link button. So what this allows you to do is actually not only create a link to have people join in, but it allows people that don't have an iOS, iPadOS, macOS device. So basically it allows non-Apple users to get in on the fun of FaceTime. So you can invite Android users, Windows users. So the only way to do that is by copying a link, creating a FaceTime link, and then you can also schedule those FaceTimes for any future events that you need. So again, FaceTime is becoming more of a Zoom competitor, more of a competitor to Microsoft Teams. They're trying to get into more of the you know, pr productivity and professional world as opposed to just like a quick FaceTime call. So the first setting that actually came to FaceTime was they brought spatial audio over to FaceTime. And if you guys haven't tried spatial audio out, I believe you need the AirPods Pro or higher to try it out. But basically it follows the physics of where the person is. So if your iPad screen is right in front of you, then the person is, is gonna sound like they're right in front of you versus if the iPad's to the left, they're gonna sound like they're over to the left. And I think this is my right, but. <laughs> So spatial audio is just a feature that came for the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Max to allow you to kind of move around and then it kind of knows exactly where you are and it uses a gyroscope and gives you like a gimbal kind of interaction and experience. I actually really like it, especially for podcast listening. For FaceTime audio, it's okay. You know, it's nothing too crazy, but, for, but just know that it did come to FaceTime as a new feature. And then the other feature that came to actual FaceTime was SharePlay. So SharePlay is a feature that isn't gonna come with iOS 15 immediately. I think it's gonna be a 15.1 or a 15.2 update because SharePlay, they brought it over in the first, I think two to five betas, but then they removed it because of some glitches and issues. But SharePlay just allows you to consume content through FaceTime with somebody else in real time and at the same time. So if two people are using, let's say Apple TV Plus, you can have a FaceTime video of watching each other watch that actual content. And then if you pause it on one side, it's gonna pause on the other side as well. So it's just another way to kind of watch something or experience content with somebody else that isn't physically with you. So that's pretty much it when it comes to those new FaceTime features. Another feature that I did wanna bring up that we lightly talked about when we were going over the actual iPad OS 15 overhaul is live text and then visual lookup. So we looked over live text. So for instance, if I click on one of these, I can just press on this little button right here to scan for text or anything like that. So I can double click on here, you know, copy it, move it over. So I wanna copy this, bring up a quick note, scroll down, go into here, we can just paste it, and you can see that it copied exactly the content that I was looking for and playing with on the image, right? So it's just an image content. But also what we didn't talk about was visual lookup. So here you can see a picture of my dog. If I just tap on here, there's this little button on the top right, which is an information button, which allows you to go into a visual lookup situation. So now you can see that A, I have some information on the picture that was taken. So it was taken with the iPad Pro, 12 megapixels, things like that. But then you see a little button on my dog, which is a lookup button. So here, which is kind of cool to see, you know, my 
iPad camera is able to see that, hey, your dog is a Shiba Inu or an Akita, and then lets you look up information. So I can click on the Shiba, see what they are, all that good stuff, and you can see that that's who he is. So click on that again, and it works with other products as well. It doesn't just work with dogs, it works with other products very similar to Google Lens, but Apple's bringing it natively to their operating system and allows you to use it inside the Photos application. So again, visual lookup and live text are huge features that are awesome with iPadOS. And then also, if I do wanna show you guys one more thing with live lookup, is if I go into here and tap on here, if there was a QR code, you can actually click on the QR code and bring up that content. So if I can find one that does have a QR code, so if I click on here, click on this, I can actually click on the QR code to bring up that content, open in Safari, it just brings you to a Wikipedia page. But again, that is live text and visual lookup through the Photos application. And then one of the last features that I really wanna talk about is this new iCloud Plus and Private Relay. So iCloud Plus is exactly what it sounds like. It's just like a membership subscription-based service for iCloud, but what that includes is actually Private Relay. And Private Relay is, imagine a built-in native VPN inside of your actual iOS or iPadOS computer, right? So if I go in here, you click on iCloud, you now have this option where it says Private Relay Beta. So what Private Relay does, so it's iCloud Private Relay, keeps your internet activity private, Private Relay hides your IP address and browsing activity in Safari and protects your unencrypted internet traffic so that no one, including Apple, can see both who you are and what sites you're visiting. So basically the way this works is when Private Relay is turned on, every single time you go somewhere, an IP address is sent out. So that IP address goes to an Apple server, but Apple also doesn't want to have your personal data so then they send that to a third party server, strips down all the IP address, sends it back to Apple, and then sends you to the website. So not only does the website not know who you are, but then also Apple doesn't know who you are when going to that website. And you can see you, have, you, you can maintain your general location, or you can actually change it up to whatever you want. So it does work like a VPN, and you can turn it on right here with Private Relay. So it's currently in beta, and some websites may have issues with it, but so far, I haven't had a single issue with Private Relay turned on, and I actually really like it. And then on top of that, it comes with an, a feature called hide my email. So I don't know if you guys are in a situation where you're constantly creating new accounts. I know that I am because I always try different softwares and different tools and things like that and it requires me to create an account. So what this does is it creates a dummy email address. So the email that gets sent to that third party application or that third party company is a fake email, but the emails that do come in, they still get forwarded to your main email. So emails that you still need to get, you're going to receive them, but on the other side, they don't actually have your real email. So I think that's actually really cool. So they can't really track you or anything. So you can see there's a bunch of made up emails depending on what application I'm signed into. And I do that as often as possible and as often as I can because I don't want all these marketers and all these other people to have my you know, personal and main email address. So those are all strides that Apple's making to again, make your browsing a little bit more private. And I love how they're making it all native. So again, this is probably gonna be another situation where it's gonna cannibalize some of these other applications in the App Store like NordVPN, like Surfshark and all these other ones that I've made you know, businesses out of providing a VPN. So, so far I do believe that those pay for VPNs are better at location tracking. So if you do use a VPN purely for content consumption outside of your location, then those are still worth it. But if you're using it just for privacy, I think using the native version is actually gonna be the most beneficial, in my opinion. And then the last thing that I do wanna to touch on is actually iMessage, because iMessage got a little bit of an overhaul. Fundamentally, it kind of is exactly the same. You know, it's still a messaging app that you can use to interact with other people that have iPhones and iOS devices and macOS devices. But what they did was they kind of changed the way kind of content is presented to you. So for instance, if somebody sends you multiple images or multiple videos, you can now actually scroll through them right through here. And then you have the, your little download button over here. So if I wanna download that, it gives you a nice little check mark to let you know like, hey, you downloaded it and you're good to go. But overall, it's the same exact thing, just fundamentally it's kind of changed up a little bit. So you have your FaceTime button on the top right, which allows you to do FaceTime audio and FaceTime video. You have the ability to look at all your different things, so allow while using app. So your settings menu is a little bit different, the way everything is organized, so photos and links are separated for you so it's easier to navigate and look back at some of the things that were sent to you. But overall, iMessage, I like the new overhaul, and whatever you see here is also gonna be on iOS 15, which is nice. And the last thing I did want to touch on was battery life, because I've been using iPadOS 15 since it released in terms of the beta developer program. So I've had a decent amount of time to work with it when it comes to battery life. So my overall battery life has been decent, right? So we do have a new low power mode that came over from iOS to iPadOS finally, which is something we've wanted for a very long time. So you turn this on, by default, it goes at 10% as opposed to 20%, but you can create a shortcut which allows you to do it whenever you want. So for instance, if it's at 50% and that's when you want low power mode to kick in, then by all means turn it on then because low power mode does give you a lot more battery life 
long term. Yeah, it gets rid of some notifications and push notifications and things like that to reduce battery consumption, but it works perfectly well and does what it's supposed to do. But if you go to screen on time over the last 10 days, it's about two and a half hours. But if you go to like some of these bigger days, so on Tuesday, we did about eight and a half hours of screen on time, and that was at 125% battery, which means I'm probably going to get around seven to six hours and 45 minutes of screen on time on a full charge. And another day like Sunday, four hours of screen on time took about a little over 100% battery because that was a day that was very YouTube heavy, it seemed like. So two hours of YouTube, two and a half hours of YouTube took up 92% of my battery. So those are things that were happening. And at YouTube TV, since it's live streaming, I was watching sports on it, watching my dolphins get crushed, unfortunately. So that was the case. But overall battery life, I haven't gotten to that eight to 10 hours of battery life that Apple promises, especially on the M1 iPad Pros. But I'm hoping now that we have the regular public release of iPad OS 15, that the battery life will get better because all those bugs and performance issues have been scratched ideally. But be on the lookout for like a 15.0.1 update because Apple's notorious for releasing a 0.0.1 update like two days after their original update. But that's pretty much going to do it for this part of the video. Let's get out of here and go to the normal screen. But that's gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there were some nice big changes that came to iPadOS, but then also some smaller ones that you guys can take advantage of to make your lives a little bit more efficient, make it a little bit easier to use iPadOS and to navigate iPadOS and things like that. But leave a comment down below of some of the features that you found out that were new, maybe you didn't know about them from the original videos that you saw, or also comment down below some features that I missed or something that you found out on your own that not a lot of people are talking about because I'm always curious to see that. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Enter the shift screen giveaway like we saw in the last video. We are giving away both an iPad mini slash iPad Air. We're leaving it up to the choice of the viewer and the winner. And also giving away a monitor to be able to take advantage of shift screen properly with your iPad and iPad OS. But don't forget to click on that link and enter the giveaway because I just want to give back to everybody for watching these videos. And the best way to do that is I figured to give away an iPad. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, peace.